What's up, everybody? Thoros Miller here once again. I'm a Croc Nick. I'm Jam and John. And we have an album review for you, and one that actually came out a little bit earlier, but we're just kind of bundling in with this week. And I've been meaning to listen to this band for a while because I got this shirt in the metalhead box and can't wear a shirt of a band that I haven't listened to yet. That's ridiculous. So I'm solving that problem because we're going to go over the latest offering from Corrosive, Catastrophic Creation. This comes out on the 3rd of September on CDN Records. This band formed in 2015 in Toronto, Ontario. This is their third album overall. Again, my first time actually listening to this band, even though I've had this shirt for a couple of months now. <laughs> and this is... Man, I would say straight up thrash, but it's not straight up thrash. Like, there's definitely more going on to it, but know that this is full tilt, just nasty, aggressive, everything. Yeah. Like, oh my God, this album is just gnarly. And I think at this point, with a lot of bands that were thrash kind of abandoning thrash, this is exactly what thrash needs. Yeah, this record is full tilt, 100%. They don't waste any time on here whatsoever, and it is out to get you. I've never listened to this band either. Are you shocked? I don't know. But I always see Corrosive Thrash everywhere, and I always keep meaning to check them out, especially since I'm such a big Thrash fan, and I just never do. But then we came across this, and I said, okay. And then Nick said, it came out on the 3rd, and I said, sweet, so it's probably on Spotify. And there we are. I've been hearing rumblings about this band, and especially after I got this shirt from the Metalhead box, when I held it up, like, oh my god, Corrosive, that band's fucking awesome. Like, well, I'm gonna have to find that out on my own, and luckily they were releasing an album the same year, and dude, like, right from the rip, this album just flat out means business. I know there's tons of aggressive thrash metal bands out there, but I don't know, there's something about this album that it just absolutely snarls. Yeah, it sounds feral and unhinged, much like the vocalist who sounds feral and unhinged, but the guitars are filthy sounding. They definitely don't sound like crunchy thrash guitars. Like, I call this pretty close to the production of what the last Nails album was. There's definitely, like, way more crunch and sizzle. The production here is raw as hell. Like, there's nothing really polished about it. Like, it honestly kind of sounds like a live performance mm -hmm. in the studio, and they were just like wrecking the studio at the same time. You know, the vocals, again, dude's just got this unhinged scream, occasionally kind of gets into roars every now and then, but it's mostly this just, again, feral scream. Like he sounds like he's recording all his vocal parts like midway through the werewolf transformation. <laughs> and Thrash is the main gear on here. Again, there's more to it, but you know, songs like the opening track in the name of destruction, which feels like every riff on there was definitely done in the name of destruction. Mm -hmm. Hyper aggressive, right out of the gate, lots of chuggy thrash riffs, you know, just tons of energy right from the rip. Mm -hmm. It is a true blue pace setter in a lot of ways. And Cataclysmo Imminente, if I'm saying that right, probably Imminente. not. Who knows? Cataclysmo Imminente. I ordered that at Olive Garden once. <laughs> really hyper-focused on the thrash once again. Fast, aggressive, snarly, lots of groovy pockets, and maybe a flat-out nod to Slayer on there. There is a harmony on there that sounds very, very Jeff Hanneman-ish. In fact, I think it kind of sounds like the harmony is on Ghosts of War, like when it starts slowing down towards yeah. the end of the song. But this band does a lot of other things on here that I really like. And again, I don't think this is purely thrash because I hear a lot of old school death metal on here. Like especially in the song Nuclear Awakening. To be honest with you, most of those riffs and most of the grooves remind me a lot of obituary. Honestly, it sounds like a thrash band covering an old school death metal song. Yep. Like that's the vibe in it. It has that heavy double time groove, the riffs, again, like they're still thrashy, but they sound more sinister, more evil. And the fact that it is a little bit slower, like just a little bit, it just has like a flat out death metal vibe. Like if I was to compare this in terms of eras, this kind of works in that whole era in like the 90s where there was like a little bit of overlap between death metal and thrash metal like you know bands like morbid saint devastation and you know like the first wave of like death metal bands the u.s obituary morbid angel death even throw in like possessed from the 80s yeah. like the 80s aspects of this because it's still thrash you got to kind of pull from the 80s a little bit 
it's a little bit more along the lines of like death thrash and to compound that whole death metal vibe there are frequent blast beats on here generally done as like you know a kind of a transition or just like a little accent in the pattern but sometimes they are extended like ashes from atomic dust the last track there's like a full-on blast beat and tremolo section that mm -hmm. is actually extended out and it doesn't sound like thrash. It sounds like flat out death metal. Maelstrom does the same thing. That's my death thrash song on here. It starts out with very gross tremolos and that bass, you can finally hear the bass isolated a little bit and it's just a super snarly beast. And while it may have thrashy D beat energy, the riffs are straight out of Morbid Angel's vault. I mean, we're talking about like Alders of Madness era. I get to reference that now. <laughs> Under a Vicious Sky is another one that is definitely more groove laden. The sinister harmonies on there. It has a full on death metal vibe. But the other side that they kind of bring in, and it happens quite a bit, and I was a little shocked by it, are pretty much metallic hardcore breakdowns. Mm -hmm. And they're led in like old school metallic hardcore breakdowns. Yep. Chaos Unbound. There is a giant like buildup where they isolate the riff. You get the floor tom hits, mm -hmm. and it was like, dude, it, did we switch gears to like Earth Crisis or something here? Not that I'm complaining because it actually transitions well. And man, like this band is all about playing whatever they can to get people moving. Yep. And breakdowns like that always get people moving. They used to get me moving, but I hang back like a pussy now. <laughs> and I've survived more shows courtesy of that. Yes, yes. My knees will no longer allow me to get in a pit and do things like that. But yeah, a lot of the breakdowns on this record start out that way. Very notable breakdown transitions. Like, you can always tell when it's coming. And granted, it's not like the Deathcore Kids where you get a China symbol, but like, it just always stops the madness in the song and allows the breakdown to build up and kind of let that energy swell a little bit more before they come back and kick you in the face. It's that classic trope of like, just isolating something as like a kind of warning well at least a warning to the people like listen you don't want to be in this part of the crowd you want to move back maybe go get a beer or something hang out with the old guys and their knees do you want to leak blood from your face then move back yes there's generally that sort of like you know kind of warning or you know key off for the crowd there and often it's an isolated riff which I do think they kind of repeat that trope a little bit too much in terms of like telegraphing the big punch. Like this is like one of those punches you can see coming kind of like, I don't know, like the first three or four people you fight Mike Tyson's punch out, hmm. but they land and they land frequently. And it's something to kind of spice this up to keep it from, you know, kind of just relying on a lot of the standard tropes of thrash itself. Hmm. At its core, this is 100% a thrash metal album, but there's a lot of stuff they pull from, again, like different camps. Like, this is kind of like Enforced. Enforced is 100% a thrash band, but there's elements of death metal yep. and hardcore kind of mixed in there. And that kind of keeps the sound fresh. And, you know, they find different ways to convey intensity in maybe a non-thrash way, I guess. That's the way I'm trying to put it in my head. I don't know. It kind of makes sense. There's even some elements of grind in here, although they don't appear often. In the song Imam Immolation, while it's got its groovy moments and definitely its thrashy moments, most of that song is so intense and insane that it comes off as grind. I, I swear to you. I mean, it's got like kind of a punky vibe. Like, I mean, this whole album, there's definitely like a punk underlying theme where it's just, I don't know, raucous. Like it wants to destroy shit. Like this is the kind of thrash that, you know, it doesn't pretend that it respects the venue it's in. It's like, listen, flip that table. Let's get in here. Are you bleeding? You should be. It's that kind of vibe. And they find some different ways to convey it once again. I like Imam Immolation, namely because, again, it's fast, it's aggressive, but there's also some vocal variety in there. He drops down into like a little bit more of a growl mm -hmm. occasionally. And it leads in the song really well with a good, groovy, riffy section that builds into like the fast, unhinged stuff. Like it doesn't just explode, mm -hmm. it gives you time to kind of simmer and kind of feel the energy start to build up. And then you flip the table. And for an album that I feel is just very primal as hell for the most part, like it doesn't spend too much time milling about trying to find a catchy melody or something like that to kind of break up the thrashy madness. I think one of the few moments of like legit melody is on Under a Vicious Sky with the acoustic little moment there that yeah. inevitably builds into just savage riffs once again. The rest of this album, the energy pretty much speaks for itself. It just wants to start a bonfire with your gasoline soaked furniture. The texture of this album is like, I don't know, choose your favorite grain of sandpaper. Everything about this 
is vicious, but it's still very dynamic. Like there's lots of cool transitions and there's never like any lost momentum mm -mm. on these songs. Mm -mm. They build well, they get to the breakdown really well. They kind of telegraph it a bit. The leads are generally just shreddy and maniacal sounding, like lots of Slayer worship there. Mm -hmm. And even the longer songs on here, they don't wane on energy. They don't feel like they go on too long or just kind of drag out riffy parts just because like, ah, I don't know what to do from here. Generally, you know, we're already done. In fact, Ashes from Atomic Dust has a really long instrumental lead in. In fact, I really love the beginning. It's a isolated drum and bass jam. There's like some like weird pick scrapes going on on the guitar. It hangs out for a good couple minutes before vocals even come in and then while that song much like the rest of them is fairly intense like it hangs on to things for a while like it allows you to kind of build a relationship almost with the riffs that are happening there's just a lot of jams going on I do like that incremental build up from ashes to atomic dust like it again every layer that comes in builds the intensity and then the song just takes off and God, the breakdown at the end of that song is just <sighs> crushing. In terms of any like negatives on here, like minor nitpicks, while I really like the opening track and the name of Destruction, I feel like it is probably the most straightforward kind of bare bones track on here because the rest of the album, I feel like kind of opens up a lot more. Like you hear more of those groovy elements, the old school death metal kind of really coming through. Granted, this does have like a pretty killer breakdown on it, but I hear like way more of those like, you know, ferocious Earth Crisis style breakdowns that pop up later, and I think they're incorporated a little bit better later on. The only melody that kind of put me off a bit, Ashes from Atomic Dust, there's like this repeated lead melody on there that, I don't know, it just doesn't quite land for me. It's supposed to kind of harmonize with the main riff, like that first thrash mm -hmm. riff that comes in, but it doesn't quite gel with me. Outside of that though, I, I like everything else on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really have any gripes at all, to be honest. I thought this record pretty much from start to finish is just a bruiser. Outside of the acoustic break and under a vicious sky, this record really doesn't pull any punches as far as wanting to throw you down a flight of stairs. Yeah, after you fall down the flight of stairs, it drags you outside and beats the shit out of you in the street. Very not Canadian of you guys. No, right, I'm just right? Saying, you like, guys are supposed to be nice. <laughs> yeah, no, not this band. Overall, I'm going to give this four stars. I dig the hell out of this. This is the shot in the arm that I think Thrash needs. Like, there needs to be more bands like this embodying that kind of old school, just gnarly spirit. I feel like we've kind of entered this point where a lot of that next wave of Thrash, I feel like we're getting some diminishing returns from them or they're just completely abandoning thrash. Yeah. I, I need to hear bands like this again to remind me that thrash is very much alive and it wisely incorporates other elements to just kind of add to the ferocity. Metallic hardcore and death metal in here used really well and especially in transitions from like mm -hmm. part to part. Mm -hmm. The songs stay feral and intense at all times. This album is a flat out banger if you are big into bands like Power Trip and Forced early creator i definitely got a lot of that warbringer and i'd even throw in like morbid saint too like this album is just flat out ferocious pretty sure it wants to take a bite out of your neck after it's wrecked it with all these sick grooves and riffs and Dang. blasts on here go check this out i'm probably gonna order this tonight i 100 percent agree this is also a four for me that rhymes yeah this band is insane i didn't really know what I was getting into. I just knew that they were a thrash band and it turned out to be so much more than that. Thrash, death metal, hardcore, some grindy moments. It just, it's unrelenting. It's very, very aggressive, super headbangable. It is very riffy. There's a ton of things like groove. They, there's a really nice even mixture of very fast, heavy, aggressive riffs and then super, super pummeling, chuggy breakdown moments. Like it, it just, they incorporated everything super well and it sounds really cool. There's absolutely no time wasted on this album. The vocals, again, that guy sounds like a ferocious, unhinged madman, which is kind of what you want out of a band like this. This is super intense and I loved every minute of it. If you like bands, yeah, definitely like Warbringer, Enforced, Nails, Vision of Disorder, Earth Crisis, Morbid Saint, things like that. You're gonna love this. I would definitely recommend checking out this record. It's a banger. So if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below to thrallsmetal.com. Our Patreon link is there. It is also on our channel up in the banner in the bottom right-hand corner. 
But if you're looking for Thralls Metal stuff, you have to go to thrallsmetal.com. We have t-shirts, both old and new. The old ones are discounted, provided we have your size. And we even have hats, too. So if you're looking for any of that stuff, click the link down below. As always, tons of stuff going on at Thralls Metal. Album reviews, discography rankings, Q&A forums, live streams. Is it metal? Is it not metal? States of metal. Nick's never-ending collection updates. We do stuff pretty much seven days a week here at Thralls Metal. And we do it all for you guys. We appreciate all of our family, our friends, our subscribers, everybody that's helped push us along the way. This has been an absolutely incredible ride. We are so very appreciative and thankful for all of you guys. We appreciate it. Yeah, you guys absolutely rule. And again, tons of content coming your way. So one more big thank you because you guys rule so damn hard. And we will catch you later.